boy, Twitch has been doing some shit this week, guys. Holy crap. It is uh, Thursday, as I am recording this right now. Thursday, uh, the 22nd of September, 2022. Hello and welcome to Luigi's Talking Head, the only show where I just talk uh, and you guys can kind of just chill out for a few minutes and hopefully get some information to you guys. Um, so, just so much shit is happening on, on Twitch recently to the point to where there is like four major things that Twitch is having problems with right now. I'm going to be talking about two of the major things in this video, and I'm going to be talking about them very kind of briefly in a way. One of them I'm going to be talking briefly, and the other one I'm going to be talking a little more uh, personalized with it. Um, so anything with the whole, um, like, XQC breakup and the Ms. Kiff stuff, like, all that stuff I'm not going to be covering in this video. I really do not watch them as streamers that much, uh, to be very honest with you guys. I'm trying to keep up with everything, uh, but I just can't right now. Uh, the other big thing that's been going on with Twitch, other than policy changes, has been uh, somebody who has scammed... Uh, their subscribers, moderators, and even streamer friends of uh, money for gambling, which I'm not going to go too in-depth in that right now. Um, but the big thing I want to talk about is a letter that got sent out around like 4 or 5 a.m. today, like really, really freaking early. Uh, well, not uh, today, sorry, yesterday, but you guys don't want to meet. So let's go ahead and kind of talk about everything. The first thing I do want to talk about is uh, Twitch's new guideline on gambling. So this was released on uh, Twitch's social medias on September the 20th, which was two days ago. And I'm going to switch over to that real quickly and show you guys kind of what they are saying. So, uh, oh, sorry guys. There we go. Uh, gambling content on Twitch has been a big topic of discussion in the community as something we've been actively reviewing since our last policy update in this area. Today we want to update you on our plans. We will prohibit sharing links or referral codes to all sites that include slots, roulette, or dice games. We've seen some people circumvent those rules and expose our community to potential harm. So we'll be making a policy update on October the 18th to prohibit streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulettes, or dice games that aren't licensed either in the United States or other jurisdictions that provide sin, uh, sufficient customer protection. I'm going to be coming back to that sentence here in a few moments, all right? These sites will include stake.com, rollbit.com, dualbits.com, and rubet.com. However, we might identify others as we move forward. We will continue to allow websites that focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker. We'll share specifics on the updates to our gambling policy soon, including a, a full policy language uh, to make sure that everyone is clear on our new rules before they take effect on October the 18th. I do want to jump back in the second paragraph um, around the second sentence on here, which I know this is kind of like a longer run-on sentence, uh, but I'm looking at the second line. Streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulette, or dice games that aren't licensed either in the U.S. or other jurisdictions uh, that provide significant customer protection are going to be prohibited. So a big reason why I wanted to mention that second sentence is because of what was happening. So a Twitch streamer known as Slicker, S-L-I-K-E-R, um, has been... Messaging a lot of people, including their fans, uh, which are like you know so your subscribers, moderators, uh, and also even his friends in the streaming industry, to give him money. Now, I specifically want to uh, increase the size of the text right here, as I want to show this off. Um, Slicker lied about the reason for funds and used them to support a sports betting habit. Sorry, wrong page. We will continue to allow websites that focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker. So legitimately, the problem that we were having here, and, and one of the big reasons why we have gotten the huge like hashtag ban gambling, hashtag Twitch ban gambling, was because of Slicker doing this. 
And Twitch, if you guys are only going to be banning things like slots, then that's not going to help what just happened right here. It even says that it was used to support sports betting habits. And how I understand is that he was... Um, you know, he was using it on like tennis matches and stuff and like uh, like UK sports uh, to get money from him. And you guys see this happen all the time. Uh, you can see somebody who's ever had a gambling addiction addiction before and you kind of know what's going to happen. They're going to ask for money because they're going to try to pay you back because they're already trying to pay someone else back. So let's say they put in a hundred bucks of their own money, right? Well, realistically, to get that money back for them, they need a hundred bucks of a payout, right? So a hundred to hundred equals broken even, which is what most people kind of go for, right? Well, you know, other people are trying to go for wins. So sometimes you'll go over the hundred dollar mark. And so, you know, you're trying to make 200 to make an make your money back and then some right well the problem is that there are times where you're going to be on on such a losing streak that you feel like you're going to be continuously losing and losing and losing and losing and that's what happened with this individual because he kept asking all of his friends for money so he could try to pay them back and so what he did uh, is he used a financial scamming strategy claiming that his bank account had been frozen and that he needed funds to pay bills and otherwise stay afloat until his bank would release the funds. Now, for people who are friends of mine, they know that I am somebody who is, you know, I try to be charitable as much as I can, but also, like, I understand financial things have happened. I have all, yeah, trust me, I've been in my own financial problems. I'm still technically in a financial problem. But, you know, it's not to the point to where I have to be, like, begging people for 10 or 20 bucks for food and stuff. Luckily, you know, I'm very, I'm very blessed. I don't have to worry about that. But what he was doing is pretty much manipulating his friends and subscribers and moderators to send him money. And finally, um, something came out where uh, I don't know exactly how it started like really showing up on here, but there was a tweet uh, on here from uh, what's his name? Sorry, uh, TK Lassery showing off his DMs with Slicker to be like, "Hey man, could I get a thousand dollars?" Right, and then other people start coming up. Hey man, could you get another thousand dollars? And then, guess what? Another person. Hey, man, could you give me like a thousand dollars or so? You know, and just continuously asking for more and more money because his goal, I'm guessing, is because he was he was going to try to like you know get everyone to be paid back. Well, it never happened. He lost everything, and is even showing that. Um, uh, Luke AFK fan uh, admitted he lost twenty seven thousand dollars, and Trainwreck TV saying he gave Slicker around forty five thousand dollars, and Slicker tried to ask XQC for money, but XQC did not give him any money. Um, so he did do a stream. On Twitch, uh, I think it was just called, like, I'm sorry or something like that. You know, the the general everyday, like, oh, I'm so sorry. And saying that, hey, he lied to a lot of people. He finally owned up for his actions, right? And when this happened as well, uh, he uh, also lost his subscription button and his affiliation on Twitch, which is honestly a good first move. Uh, and you know how Twitter is, right? Uh, Pokemon, uh, Ms. Kiff, and Devin Ash talking about early plans to make a joint statement uh, with other top streamers that unless Twitch takes action on gambling, they will hit them economically during the holiday season with peak ads. And here's, I don't know what the fuck that is down there, but you know what I mean. But pretty much showing that off, right? Now, a big reason why I wanted to specifically talk about this sorry one camera 
So specifically, a reason why I want to talk about this statement a little bit is because of the letter that Twitch made. And specifically knowing that, you know, pr that this was all done on sports betting. And Twitch's release is saying, hey, on October the 18th, we are going to prohibit streams of gambling that are slots, roulette, or dice games. But websites that are sports betting, fancy sports, or poker are perfectly fine as long as they have um, U.S. or other jurisdiction licenses and uh, sufficient customer protection. I am going to say this, and you know, and this is where I'm probably going to have my hot take of the day. So here's Luigi's hot take of the day. Um, I think all, I think all of it should be banned. I'm sorry. I'm being very legitimate too. I truthfully think poker, sports betting, fantasy sports, and every type of gambling game should be completely removed off the platform. And I have two reasons and two big things of why I'm going to say this. A we have to remember that Twitch is technically not an 18 plus formatted spot. Twitch is for everybody who is 13 years or older. And a lot of people forget that those are the rules for Twitch. It's just 13 and over. And then if you have an 18 plus stream, you must mention that you are an 18 plus stream. Now, how kids still get into 18 plus streams, I don't freaking know, right? That's a whole Twitch problem that that's not for me to deal with as a streamer. Number two is why are we having betting on here as well as having other types of media that, in my opinion, I don't think are also very good for the platform, and I am will say it out loud, and that's the hot tub streams. I truthfully don't think it is the proper place, personally, for Twitch. I feel like there are a lot of many other amazing websites that that content could be on where I feel like the people who do it could actually make more money than they would on Twitch. Note why I'm saying that. But that's not for me to say. I am not a hot tub streamer. I don't make money from hot tub streaming. I just go on and, and bitch and moan for four hours uh, every few weeks and then get a little bit of money from it, right? So for me, this... A lot of people were saying that this was a Twitch W. I'm sorry, but this is a Twitch L. This is a huge Twitch L, everybody. And I'm saying that uh, from the bottom of my heart. If we are truthfully worried about gambling content affecting the community, then we need to get rid of it. Especially because some of these sites that were mentioned, like State.com, Rollbit, Dualbits, they were paying streamers to go on their site and do gambling. And now, since you know they're not going to be able to be on there, hopefully a sports betting website or a poker website will be able to sponsor said person because if not, that person just lost a sponsorship, right? So why don't we get rid of all of it? Now, the one thing that I feel like people are in the comments are going to be like, but Luigi, what about things like in GTA where they have in-game stuff? That is where I feel like we could make a proper exception. Let's think about this, right? And I'm going to use GTA 5 as a big example right now. GTA 5 introduced a new thing called the Diamonds Casino. And it is like a huge casino thing. You have your own little penthouse, all that type of stuff in GTA 5. But there is slots and poker things and stuff in the game. Now... You can purchase uh, real-world items for that game, which is basically taking real-life money and getting digital currency. But this is the only time I want to say that I feel like this will be okay, and that is it is a digital currency. While you are using maybe 10 or 20 bucks to get, you know, one or two million freaking cash card points, whatever they're called nowadays, right? Everything is done virtually in game, which means that if you make any money from the slots, you're not actually getting that money back IRL. It's coming back to you in game. 
And I feel like that should be okay, because that is actually meant for entertainment value now. And on top of that, too, you can still go there, and you can also do poker. You can do sports betting on there. There's horse race betting on there. Uh, you can also spin the big wheel and try to win a brand new car and all that type of stuff. And I feel like that's okay because it is a proper video game. But we're talking right now about real scenarios where you're putting in real money and trying to make real money out of it. So, you know, we're trying we're talking about real life money to real life money, not real life money to digital currency to then having digital money to play with. I feel like having that medium portion of having to have digital currency right here and then you have digital money, I feel like is your big differences. Let me know what you guys think about that. I personally think that is the best method that we could do. And that way, too, that could also be great for Rockstar, too. Because then, people who really enjoy betting or gambling, you know, you could do, like, a GTA 5 session with your friends and go do gambling and have some fun. You know, like, you know, put 100 bucks on something like that. I don't freaking know. You can do something stupid like that or, or give some money to charity or... Do what um, some big creators did back uh, back in the older Fortnite days and just have some fun, play some Uno, and put a few get to subs on the line. Like, you know, they, all that stuff I feel like is perfectly okay because that's all entertainment and fun value. But when you're trying to beg for money to make money back, I think that's when we have proper problems. Speaking of money, we also got a fun letter uh, from Twitch president Dan Clacy on subscription revenue shares. This was uh, September 21st, so it was yesterday morning. Again, I'm filming this on the 22nd, so it was it was it came out at like 4 a.m. for me uh, on the 21st. So I did not have time to really sit down and try to script a video with everything going on. And let's go ahead and also read through this a little bit as well. Um, I'm trying my best to do just like the bare minimum possible, but there's a lot of stuff going on here that I feel like we need to talk about as a community. So let's go ahead and head over back to our desktop. Hello, Twitch community. I'm Dan Clancy or Clancy. I don't know why I said Clancy. That's funny. I'm Dan Clancy. Uh, I'm Dan Clancy, president of Twitch and responsible for day-to-day -day operations in the service. FYI, this blog is targeted to streamers, but everyone is, of course, welcome to read along with us. In other words, you guys are probably here as a viewer and not a streamer. Because I bet you a lot of your streamers are probably complaining about this. I'm also going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys, too. That way you guys can read just a little bit better. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you guys. So here we go. We are right here, and I'm going to go ahead and... I will also highlight in the blue uh, how uh, where I'll be reading, just to help myself out as well, too. This morning, we reached out to a subset of streamers about some upcoming changes to their agreement terms. This blog gives us an opportunity to be clear with all streamers on Twitch about those changes and talk more broadly about our strategy to help streamers make more money on our services or service. Streamers are and always... Streamers are and always will be the foundation of our global community. It's your passion, hard work, and creativity that makes Twitch the one-of-a-kind place it is. To bring it back around more directly to this blog topic, we can't run this service unless you make money. That's not a drawback. It's by design. This in it partnership or innate partnership is why we support all streamers careers and ambitions like their on own before we talk about what's happening next we need to share some information for context descriptions we use a baseline revenue share of 50 50 on the net revenue for those earnings the vast majority of twitch streamers have these terms in their agreement however for some time we did offer standard agreements with premium subscription terms just to select streamers as they grow larger this isn't something we've talked about publicly but such deals are common knowledge within the streamer community historically we don't have a consistent framework to determine who would receive these deals and when over a year ago we made the decision to begin to stop offering those premium agreements to new New streamers not already on these terms. 
As we reflect on how we handled these premium deals, we realize a few problems. First, we had not been transparent about the existence of such deals. Second, we were not consistent in qualifying criteria, and that generally went to larger streamers. Finally, we won't believe we sorry. Finally, we don't believe it's right for those who, on standard contracts to have varied revenue shares based on their size of a streamer. I fully agree with that. I truthfully think that uh, streamers on here work very hard, especially since I have also read a few, I'm not saying from who or my sources, um, I have seen a few streaming contracts uh, for Twitch partnership and knowing on how many hours they need to stream per month and how much it is. <coughs> and I'll tell you guys, whoo, shit. All I gotta say is, I don't know if I could ever be Twitch partner is all I could really say. In the IG world, all streamers will be on the same set of terms regardless of size. However, insinuating that policy would have a negative impact on the streaming on the streamers currently on these terms, many of whom were instrumental in helping us build the Twitch we know today. These streamers have come to depend on the additional revenue split to maintain their standard of living. Yes, Twitch, just like the people right now who about 15 to 25% of them are in a deep-ass controversy right now, one of them whose organization is, in, is on leave right now, and where half of them are right now fighting with each other. Yeah, a great... That's what I want to make sure that that my Twitch is about, everybody. So I want to make sure that whenever people go on, you know, my streaming platform, Twitch.tv, that I see Mizkiff covering up freaking, freaking scandals, leave having problems with OTK, uh, XQC having problems with their girlfriend, and people bouncing on them about that, and someone asking other streamers for over three hundred plus thousand dollars to gamble on your website, and then find people, not trying to be mean to Amrith, but people like Amrith who are doing hot tub streams, um, just doing whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, that's a Twitch I really want to know and love. Anyways, continuing on. For those streamers still on those premium deals, we're adjusting to deals so that they retain their 70-30 revenue split for the first $100,000 earned through subscription revenue services. Uh, reven revenue above $100,000 will be split to the standard 50-50 share split. We're announcing this change now, but it won't go in effect until after June 1st, 2023. After this point, streamers will only be affected once their existing contract is up for renewal. All streamers with these terms have already received this information and more via email, and we will make sure to give them exact updates and timelines as we get closer to June 1st, 2023. <coughs> I'll be 100% honest with you. I truthfully think this is not the best play that Twitch could have done. And the reason why I'm saying that is because let's think about this. What is the one thing that all of my streamer friends who grind every single day have such a huge stream schedule and work their asses off to try to get that 70-30 revenue split so that way they can actually start doing more for their community and be able to do more on their own? How do you think they're going to feel now knowing that for right now, they're going to be at 50-50 for the rest of the time that they're on the platform with the Q purple check, check mark or not? I personally think that is complete BS. Now, I would say yes. Some people could say that having it all be 50-50 split is fair and even for everybody, but I truthfully think we could have actually had a decent settlement size where we could have done maybe 60 40 or actually the better share of 70 30 just like what youtube does for youtube memberships and super chats now the one thing is that twitch does give you 100 percent of bits that you are given where super chats are split uh 70 30 but on youtube though ad revenue is also a lot better i'm gonna come back to that in a few minutes <clears throat> For approximately 90% of the streamers on standard agreements with premium subscription terms, this change will not affect them at their current revenue. For those who are affected, we wanted to make sure that the impact was minimal, not by just giving them ample time before the deal goes to effect, but also by offering an alternative way to earn revenue. Our recent bump in ads revenue sh share 
to 55% as part of the ad incentive program is a great way for those larger streamers to make up most, if not all, of that revenue. For those who are interested in additional details, we have provided a copy of the email that we have sent to some of these streamers explaining the change and how it affects them. It's a reality of our business that we will, in rare cases, continue to negotiate custom agreements on a case-by-case -case basis. However, we have been reducing how often we offer these deals and the total value of these deals. Now, let's get to the big question. Why not 70-30? Okay. I'm, I'm going to read this as fast as I can, guys, because I've, there's a lot to unpack right here. So I do apologize. I know this video is already kind of long, guys. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, okay? And I hope you guys are enjoying the content. If you are, we are at around 27, 26 minutes in recording right now. So um, how about this? If you have made it past the 25-minute mark, I want you to comment down below, 25-minute gang. And if you have subscribed, let me know down below, and I will check out your channel. And if I like your stuff, I'll subscribe to you as well, okay? Let's build our amazing community. So here we go. Why not 70-30? Twitch is going to answer this question right here, right now, in black and white, or blue and yeah, white for us. When we first established a 50-50 revenue share split, it was a signal that we were in this together. You do all the amazing work you do to create great content, engage with your audience, and grow communities. On our side of the partnership, it was our responsibility to make continuous investments in the products and people that make your growth possible. Okay. At the time of posting, more than 22,000 of you have weighed in on user voice, asking us to move all streamers to 7030 and to pay streamers faster. Let's chat about the lather part first. As you probably heard by now, we're in the middle of rolling out the largest change to payouts in years by cutting the payout threshold in half to $50. This is an important middle step that will help streamers put money in their pockets now while getting us closer to our goal of same-day payouts and lower thresholds. That right, so this right here, just the whole $50 thing, that already is a huge W. And I'm saying, and, I, and I'm not saying this article is a W. I'm saying that, just that sentence or that paragraph is a W. Because even YouTube still forces you to wait until you do get $100 in your AdSense account slash your YouTube account until that you can pull that money. A lot of places are like that, which is very understandable, right? But what I will say is that having it be $50 is actually a very good achievement for a lot of people. Uh, there's a lot of amazing people that I know who do not stream, you know, every single week on Twitch, for example. And so for them, you know, they still have subscriptions and stuff. And having people donate biddies and stuff, you know, if they stream once every two weeks, they could still make a tiny bit of money and get that money out quicker because they might be working or they might be having their own financial troubles where that $50 could come in handy very, very importantly. So I'm very glad that they are cutting that in half since I know people who are in that situation. That's including my own. I do pay for services that you guys don't see behind the scenes to kind of help with things uh, like, sh you know, streaming gear, make sure that we have these amazing lights that you guys can control in my chat, all that type of stuff, which I pay per year or pay per month on. And so having that money faster, I think is going to be much more important. So that is a W. Thank you, Twitch, for that. Continuing on on here. Investments like these are paying off for streamers. Products like Prime Subs, Community Gifting, Hype Trains, and the Ads Incentive Program, to name a few, have driven an increase of 27% more streamer revenue. Ooh, this is interesting. 27% more streamer revenue per viewer hour every year over the last five years. This means that the same viewer viewer hour now earns you three times more money than did five years ago on average. Our investment to your monetization options have already and continue to put more money in streamers' pockets than 20% of more sub-revenue shares would have. This is where I'm starting to have problems, right? So you're saying on here 
products like Prime Sub, Community Gifting, Hype Trains, and the Ad Incentive Program have driven an increase of revenue. Um, I will agree that I have gotten a little bit of money from, from ads, but you guys also don't see behind the scenes how many ads I have to run. And let's play a game right now. I'm actually going to switch over to this, to my normal camera for a moment. Let, let's just play a game right now, right? Put a one in chat, or not in chat, in the description below, if you are somebody who clicks off a stream when you see that they have six ads waiting for you. I want you to put a one in chat, or put a two in chat, if you are someone who is willing to stay. Now I'm talking about a brand new streamer, someone you've never seen before, not someone that you would consider yourself as part of the community with. I mean a brand new streamer that you've never met before. Put a one in the comments down below. If you would wait for those four, five, six, seven, or sometimes eight ads before you even get to see the content, or put a two in chat if you are somebody who will be like, yeah, you know what, no problem, I don't mind waiting to see if this content is right for me. I will tell you right now, I am part of the number one crew. I bounce. And a big reason why I bounce is because I, especially whenever I'm trying to look for new people to raid, if I'm doing a raid that night, um, I want to be able to find somebody quickly from, from my community who is, you know, getting, getting hyped, getting ready to meet someone new. And I'm only over having to sit here, wait for, you know, a possible three to five minutes waiting for ads to come through. Now I have to make some weird banter talk with my chat that I have to just pull out of my ass. You know, it just doesn't. It doesn't bode well, right? Now, a lot of people have been com coming to me complaining about how many ads that I run on my channel. But I feel like a lot of people don't know on why I run so many ads on my channel. And I'm not going to make this, a, make this a woe is me type shit. I'm going to be legit and honest with you guys. The reason why I specifically run a certain amount of ads on my channel, well, is because I don't want people to have to wait when they're meeting me. If I if someone clicks on my stream, even if they're not a subscriber, I really want them to come in and hang out with us. Now there is the the weird opportune moment where sometimes it's like, oh, taking a break, be right back. Like that has happened before. Um, and same thing has happened with the ad part of it too. But for me, whenever I run a certain amount of ads, uh, the pre-roll ads, which are the first ads that you would see by clicking on a new streamer are turned off. So for me to make sure that I don't have any pre-roll ads on, I have to run three minutes worth of ads every 30 minutes to guarantee that there is no pre-roll ads whatsoever. And I am not a big fan of that, but the problem though is if I turn off ads, even on my end, you guys still get ads, but I just don't get any money from it. So it becomes a lose-lose situation overall. And I was thinking that hopefully by having no pre-roll ads for everybody, by running you know, kind of longer ads, would at least give new viewers a chance to watch, and it would also give you an incentive to subscribe, right? But on here, it's say they're not even saying that normal subscriptions have had a big piece of everything, right? So... Also, too, if Prime subs are being a problem, I'm going to be honest with y'all. We can get rid of Prime subs. I'm cool with that. And I'm saying that on the legitimate DL. So let's be honest. There, there's a lot of people who have Amazon Prime. And having that Prime sub is amazing because they're able to support their favorite streamer. But at the end of the day, though, if Prime subs are costing you so much money, Twitch that you cannot contain having prime subs since you guys are losing, I guess, the full value, then why don't you just give us the full value of the prime sub instead of splitting it just like a tier 1 or tier 2 or tier 3? It makes no sense. Continuing on where we were, 
Prime subs often get lost in conversation when it comes to revenue share. For Prime subs, we pay streamers the same amount they receive for a regular subscription, even though it is included as an added benefit of their Prime subscription. Combined with other monetization products, Prime subs increase your effective revenue share by approximately 15% to about 65% total. This number varies by streamer size and location, but subscription revenue share is not the full picture on on revenue share for streamers the kind of what i just said in a way like you know prime subs are amazing i think they're great they're a great way for me to show off emotes that my amazing artist has done for me it's a great way for other people to incentivize to possibly check out my channel in that type of way but even then if prime subs are losing you guys money instead of screwing over everybody and staying at 50 50 why don't you bump us to 70 30 but just get rid of prime subs and be like yo listen we're gonna discontinue the prime sub but every single streamer becomes 70 30. Like, i think that would be a much better deal but i want to talk about the next sentence right in uh, the paragraph right now because this is why i get pissed off Lastly, we have to talk about the cost of our service. Delivering high definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive. And I fully agree. Running a website in general is expensive. Using the published rates from Amazon's Web Services, Interactive Video Services, also known as IVS, which is essentially Twitch video. <coughs> Excuse me. Live video costs for a 100 concurrent CCU streamer, which I'm guessing is 100 concurrent users, a streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than $1,000 per month. We don't typically talk about that because, frankly, you shouldn't have to think about it. But rather you focus on doing what you do best. But to fully answer the question of why not 730, ignoring the high cost of delivering the Twitch service would have meant giving you an incomplete answer. So, my question to Twitch now is why why are you guys still having to why is Twitch still having so much problems with the Amazon Web Service? Because here's the thing, right? Uh, everyone forgets in a in a way that Amazon owns Twitch, but Twitch does have to make their own money to survive. That's how businesses work. Amazon is a parent company. Amazon owns Kindle. Kindle is its own division. Twitch is its own division. Um, Whether well, stuff like Prime Video is its own decision. And each one has its own LLCs and, and accountants and stuff like that, right? Which I think we all understand that. We all make sense of that. I don't think we have any problems with that here. My problem is Amazon owns this service and this service you can look up and you can do it yourself and you guys think i'm being funny when i say that if i just do this click on search google for look look i can just do it myself i can create my own twitch You know, because there's big companies that use AWS, which is great. So, again, why, like, yeah, you did answer the question, you know, we don't think, frankly, you should have to think about it. But now that you've said it, we're going to think about it. And my big problem with this is that Twitch is owned by Amazon. I don't care that this, like, you know, Amazon has to have, Amazon has to split the divisions, yada, 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 right? I get that. But Twitch is owned by Amazon, who is using the web services. Isn't Amazon already dumping money in the web services? So wouldn't you think Twitch would have its own just web service account that then gets its own, sh like, thing? You know, that would be like me making a website for everybody, but telling them, oh, hey, every single video that you post, you have to give me $5, and then I can, sh then that video is going to be allowed on my platform. Like, no, why would you ever do that? Then that, that, 
thing that I just said right there was a big reason why even like, for example, Smosh came to YouTube because Smosh, when it was just a website, when they had their videos on there, they had to pay for everything. YouTube never made anyone pay for shit. And they're still giving 70-30. This is a huge L, Twitch. This is a complete L. And I think this is one of the big reasons why people are moving from Twitch to YouTube. And I won't lie, I originally moved from YouTube to Twitch. And, yeah, I'm going to say it, I kind of regret it. I kind of regret moving over to Twitch. But when I did, it's because YouTube was taking L after L after L, and Twitch was making all of these great W's. The tables have churned badly. <laughs> and what I mean by that is YouTube shorts for me are decently going well. Main channel videos are doing okay for me. Live streams on YouTube have been doing okay for me. And like luckily a, a good small portion of my community on Twitch has been kind enough for me to move over to YouTube and hang out with me there. Well, guess what? All I had to do was contact my old channels and stuff and be like, hey, I'm back live streaming again on a YouTube channel. Give them my YouTube channel. I could be back up to having more viewership than I ever did on Twitch. I left YouTube doing better on YouTube to go on to Twitch to, to try to do something and try to better myself. And now here I am having to have these real deep inner thoughts, like really asking myself, should I re-sign my affiliation contract? Should I try to get out of it? And that's a lot of questions that I have to try to answer in my own brain. You know, but let's go back to this and finish this out real quickly. So what's next? When someone asks me why Twitch is the best place to make money as a streamer, it's not. My answer starts first and foremost with the community. Community on Twitch is real and tangible from chat memes to subscriber emails to TwitchCon meetups and yes, to how streamers earn money. That's partially because of our work to equip you with the right tools, but it's primarily because streamers like you are putting yourselves out there, embracing what you're more passionate about, and building communities. We believe we have the most compelling offering to streamers, but there's still more that we can do. The best Twitch is the one we build together, and your feedback helps us evolve into the right direction. As always, if you have any feedback, the best place is to share is Twitch's user voice. Thank you for your time, Dan Clancy. Which I totally forgot he was even a thing. And this is the uh, email that you would have gotten if you were part of the premium subscription services. Uh, this was pretty much just telling you uh, what this said but in a much smaller format. So what do we learn today, everybody? What do we learn today in this almost hour-long video? Well, what we learned today is Twitch is taking L after L after L after L after L right now. And people like... I'm, TikTok is still L in a big way. But people like TikTok, YouTube, and even Facebook are making proper W's right now. So, funny enough, when Twitch was doing its own thing about the gambling stuff, YouTube came out with its own, like, hey, we have some stuff in, in the works we're going to share with you now. And YouTube out here giving W's to everybody. And I mean W's. If you're someone who does shorts on YouTube, for example, if you get 10 million views within 90 days and have a thousand subs, you are now part of the YouTube partner program. And I don't mean like the shorts funds, I mean the proper YouTube partner program where you get super chats, memberships, anything that you can think of, including ads on your videos. And yes, ads suck. But sadly, I have seen too many creators, both on Twitter and in DMs I've asked for, getting big money to run so many ads. Like there was a, 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 tw a Twitter user, um, if I can find it in, in post-processing, I'll, I'll put it uh, right over here. They were like, hey, you know, I don't like running ads on my channel, but 
and it would show how much they would get for running so much amount of ads. And the number was freaking huge. So Twitch is shoving ads down our throats. But the only way that we can get rid of ads on Twitch is either getting Twitch Turbo, which is a flat rate thing, which I guess they can't really raise on, or people have to subscribe by either using their Prime sub or subscribing with either Tier 1, Tier 2, or Tier 3 for ad, in, for ad uh you know, ad free viewing, which the streamer I, I've learned can actually turn that off technically, I believe. So there's a lot to unravel here. And I'm actually going to be putting a video in the description below of someone who actually goes a lot more into detail about the business side of, of what that article said. I'm going through what the creative side I think is kind of going through. I, I think, I think my, I hope, I hope my, my view comes that way. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done on Twitch. Discoverability on Twitch is still complete ass. I mean ass. With us now not having a proper 70-30 split for people who are Twitch partners, why do we still have Twitch partners? And why can't an affiliate just now get a check mark saying that, hey, this is now a verified user who we would recommend to our community. I would see that maybe being a change instead of being a partner. Um, you know, what about, and I'm going to say it, what about the hot tub streamers? If we're going to do something about gambling and if we're going to halfway do it, I mean, technically Twitch halfway did the whole hot tub streams too because of the whole porn thing that happened years ago. But you know, when are we going to make it where advertisers want to come onto our platform? That's the biggest question. You know, when YouTube had its apocalypse a few years back and when ad companies saw how these videos were so toxic and edgy and like almost life-threatening, that's when the apocalypse happened. And do you know what happened? People either move their stuff or they abided by rules. You know, for me, I I never tried the whole family friendly thing just because it's like I like being able to say what I want to say when I want when I want to say it. Obviously, that's you know within terms of service, right? I'm not that stupid, but you know, but for on YouTube though, if they're like, hey, I'm gonna give you a hundred thousand dollars, you just have to not cuss. Yo, give me the hundred k. I won't I won't even cuss in my day to day life anymore, right? But Twitch has no compelling offer for. It's people who are trying to make something from it. And for people who are Twitch partners, who for the longest time could not stream to other platforms, but now they can, this is bringing up a lot of gray area that is scaring me more and more and more. And it, this is just giving me more and more of a reason to focus my time back on YouTube and also focusing my time on TikTok because TikTok is actually driving viewers to my YouTube and Twitch channel if I am multi-streaming, which Twitch does not allow you to do. And YouTube never had a restriction unless I, unless if you were signed exclusively with YouTube gaming or, or like the YouTube music, whatever stuff that they do now with those exclusive rights. So... There's a lot that needs to be done here in the platform. And as you are taking more and more and more L's and how your big streamers that you throw on everyone's channels saying that, oh, these are people that we think you're going to like and how all of them are in their own controversy and their own bullshit. This is not the Twitch I want to be in. This is not the community I want to be in either. I won't lie. The Twitch community has been better than my YouTube community before. But my YouTube community has been very generous and very nice to me to where I'm actually getting better reception on YouTube than I am on Twitch. So once YouTube gets a few extra features that I'm like really honing for, I may not be streaming on, on Twitch for much longer, guys. I'm not going to lie. So, obviously, October the... Let me get the date real quickly. October the 18th cannot come soon enough. I really hope that this small portion of banning on gambling can bring more things out and maybe bring out more creative things on Twitch. But Twitch, if we're worried about gambling here, 
Let's just kill all of it. Let's just do the idea that I had. That would make, I think, most people very happy. You know, if it's something in a video game, fine, it's a video game. But if you're spending real money to try to make real money back, I feel like that should be banned off the platform. Again, I feel like something like an Uno tournament or something like that, or, or, or like a COD tournament where it's someone actually doing a job, it's a different story. It's not gambling. You know, you're not putting in $500,000 to try to win $1 million, right? So, I do apologize for this being such a long video, but let me know down below, guys, what your guys' opinions are on these two stories, and let me know if you guys have any other topics you want me to cover. Uh, please, no politics or nothing like religion-based or anything like that. I don't delve in religion, I don't delve into politics, and I don't really delve into rich, rich things. Uh, but anything maybe tech-wise or if something comes up in the Twitch community or YouTube community that you want me to talk about, I'll be more than happy to give my opinions on it. So let me know uh, down in the comments below how you guys felt about this video and any topics you want me to talk about. And I'll be more than happy to uh, see what I can do to kind of learn about that topic, okay? Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you guys in the next video.